You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's some of you may on Twitter the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another new Let's Play episode of Don Chorus Bjorn's Path. That's right, Bjorn is back. Apparently the new illustration in his route, so I'm eager to jump right in. Anyway, y'all, before we jump right in, let me just uh, let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like full access to our community Discord server and access to all upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. All that for as little as $5, y'all, and it greatly helps support the channel. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> well, Bjorn is grabbing us two more bottles of lift at my empty one and read, and read the label. It's just a plain lager. I'm not familiar with that one, but it has the vibe of the cheaper ones I could find in the store. What beer is that? Uh, Perda, uh, imported from Poland. I buy it to keep in touch with my roots. Here you are. The beer is almost ice cold. Bjorn must have kept it outside the window for a while. I didn't pay much attention to the taste before, but the hookah made me much more perceptive than usual. It really works in subtle ways. The taste is hoppy and dry, but with a bit of sweetness from malt. Just a good beer. Maybe it's nothing fancy, but it's enough for me. Hey, this is good. Happy you think so. This is nice. I really missed it. Some hookah, some beer, a good company, and all the time we could want. Yeah, I think I'm starting to see the appeal. No, no, I don't think my voice is fitting for Bjorn. Maybe something deeper, calmer. Okay. Makes me think of my evenings with Miko, but we had music instead of a hookah and didn't drink. Frankly, it's a rather universal cross-cultural recipe for a good evening. Friends, friends, some light entertainment, and a good conversation. You know, you're awakening some parts of me that I forgot about. Do I? Oh? Oh, do I? And the me that could spend the whole evening talking with a friend about just anything and consider it the best way of spending time. Done with your beer already? Second y'all, did I... Huh. Okay. Okay. I, all right. Look at the bottle in my paw. Indeed, it is empty. Apparently. Hey, I uh, I need to catch up. Though with my weight, I should drink at least twice as much as you to really catch up. I'm not feeling any alcohol yet. You? I think I do. This is also waking the part of me that likes to drink, definitely. I'm not sure if that's good, but I'm in a mood for that, too. There's also a part of me awakening that wonders how it would feel to snuggle up into that fluffy bear in front of me. I don't know if listening to it would be the right thing to do. Though Bjorn's own words resounded in my head. How we filter ourselves when we're sober and end up regretting that later. But I'm afraid of rejection, and I'm afraid I'd scare him. Do you have any more of these? I, ta I tap on the empty bottle. I don't know if it's a good idea, but I'll see where this, will, where this will take me. I have something better, actually. And by better, I mean stronger. Bjorn walks up to the window, opens it, and takes out a flat glass bottle full of amber-colored liquid from a small heap of snow on the windowsill. What's that? Something a friend from Poland showed me. Now he crosses the room. <clears throat> now he crosses the room, his bag lying on the floor and still full of his stuff, and fishes out a bottle of milk from it. Uh, Bjorn? What are you doing? Uh, nut vodka with nut milk. Absolutely deranged. Quite the contrary, you pure genius. He opens both and then really mixes them in the, glass, in the glasses that were provided in the room. Bjorn, this can't be good. Have you ever tried it before? I did, and it's delicious. It's nut time. Oh, God. It's it's going to be nut time, apparently. I grab the glass from Bjorn and eye it suspiciously. Well, even if it turns out to be awful, it's still alcohol. A tasting sip. Huh. It really is good. Like a cream dessert, but, it, but liquid. You're supposed to do that in one gulp, though. Oh, wait, the hookah's dying out. In one gulp? Okay, here goes nothing. The alcohol diluted in the milk burns my already irritated throat only a little. But if this is what we're going to be drinking for the rest of the evening, I'm guaranteed to get drunk. Oh, Carvin? Are you there? Yeah, why can't I see you? I think we just lost power. Hold on, just let me... Bjorn turns on his laptop, illuminating the room with an almost clinically cold glow. I hope this passes quickly. The battery in my laptop is a flop. I'm gonna may last us maybe two hours or so. Though I bet the guest house has some power generators and they'll kick in short any shortly anyway. Two hours is just enough to watch a film. Do you have anything downloaded? Of course I do. We sit down on the bed, pressed up against each other. I'd never tell that to Bjorn, but power outages make me feel slightly uneasy, especially when they happen in places I'm not too familiar with. Second y'all, it is water time.
All right. The faint blue glow of the moon fills the room like water, as if we were on the bottom of the ocean. The air feels stuffy and suffocating despite the open window. A chorus of muffled voices sounds through the walls, but I can't pick out any words. So, what would you like to watch? Uh, something lighter than yesterday. I couldn't take another film like that two nights in a row. Huh, sure, I should have something. I'll keep the hookah going. There's still some tobacco left in it. Bjorn starts browsing his folder while I lean back against the wall. Okay, I found something. Does Fallen Angles sound familiar? Fallen Angles? You mean Fallen Angels? Nope, never heard of it. A spiritual sequel to a film I liked a lot. This should be much lighter than the anime yesterday. Ooh, excuse me. What is it about? I don't know. The first one was about two policemen and the women they met along the way. Everything was set in Hong Kong. Hong Kong? I don't think I've ever seen a film from there. I hope it meant for a wild ride. By the way, how about I turn off the light so that it doesn't blind us when the power is back? Good idea, yeah. I don't think we're going anywhere anyway, right? I wasn't planning to. Bjorn gets up to turn off the light, starts the film, and returns to the bed, sitting down right next to me. I lean on his sturdy shoulder as if he was a giant pillow. His fur is soft and so nice to the touch, like a sheet of folded sat I could brush, with, brush my fingers into. We stay like that together as the opening credits roll. Wow. This is really slow-paced, like extremely so. I'm bored and it doesn't look like anything is going to start happening in this film. Bjorn has a really weird taste in cinematography. I have to remember not to trust it ever again. Uh, Carvin? This thing is an absolute bore, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, the prequel was definitely faster paced. How far are we even? That's one-fourth of the whole thing. Oh. It's not like I mind too much, not when I'm with Bjorn. Even if the film is boring, I have having him near me is enough for me to stay. More alcohol and we'll get through it. If you say so, I'm so curious where this will go. So, if it won't bore you to death, we can continue. I shouldn't judge a film before I actually see the whole thing, so yeah, I'm willing to give it a shot. Two more drinks coming right up, then. Bjorn gets up from the bed, turns on the light, and walks off to make us more drinks. I pause the film so that Bjorn doesn't miss anything while he's busy making us more, more of this milky delight. I stand up, too, straightening out my t-shirt and trousers that got all crumpled up from lying in the bed. Bjorn? Yeah? I hope this won't sound too weird. Can I drop the clothes? It's uncomfortable being it's uncomfortable being in them in bed. Oh, good idea, especially in case we fall asleep while watching. Do you think there's a risk? The film d didn't seem that boring. Well, I'm making this next batch of drinks stronger. Bjorn prepares the drinks on the table, mixing equal parts of vodka and milk, filling one glass almost to the brim, the other to the half. He passes me my glass and then salutes with his drink, almost spilling some of it. To friends! To friends! We clean the glasses and take a big sip each. Oh, Bjorn wasn't exaggerating. This is much stronger than when he served me before. Oh, nice. Meanwhile, Bjorn already put his glass down and took off his shirt. It didn't do much to hide his robust build anyway, but seeing him actually shirtless is something else entirely. I don't want to stare and make Bjorn uncomfortable, though, so I put my drink down too and start undressing myself. I glance at Bjorn to see if he's looking at me, but he's busy, but he's busy undressing himself and pays no attention to me. Good. I feel oddly self-conscious exposing myself right now. The chilly air on my naked fur makes me shiver nervously. The warmth from the alcohol heats me up from the inside, spreading through my veins and relaxing my muscles. Hmm. The drink really was strong. I'm starting to feel incoherent. Even taking off my trousers seems more complicated than usual. Like, you know, water time. Hmm, maybe I should have eaten more than just a light dinner a few hours ago. I had no idea the evening would end like this, though. I keep surprising myself lately. But that's good, I think. It's nice to do things. Be brave. Catch the moment. Feel alive. You're sure you're fine? Yeah, why? I reply while struggling to pull my paw through the trouser leg. Uh, just asking. I assume you know yourself well enough to know where your limits are. Hmm, do I? But even if I don't, I guess learning from mistakes works well. I'm good. I feel fantastic. I think I needed that. Well, good. Want to continue with the film? If it means sitting next to each other on, on one bed, then yeah. I nod and walk over to the light switch and let some darkness in. With the lights off, all my senses become sharper, though dulled a bit by the alcohol. When I breathe in, I can clearly smell Bjorn's deep scent under the cherry and mint smoke permeating the room. He smells of chocolate and nuts with a hint of spice. I think I can smell some arousal on him, too. Or maybe it's just mine. Am I horny for him? I think I am. 
Maybe that's why I was feeling anxious when we were undressing. Maybe I'm not even that drunk, but just overwhelmed. What am I planning to do? I don't know myself. I know I wanted to just cuddle up to him for a while. I haven't felt close to anyone for a long time. When I think of it, I've been terribly lonely. I just haven't f allowed myself to feel that, repressing it to some deeper part of me, and now it overcomes me like a tidal wave. I attend classes, I go for walks to the city center, I talk with people online, but I haven't really had real contact with anyone since I moved out, or even earlier. I sip through the days, focus on the tasks ahead of me, my mind always elsewhere. I yearn for intimacy and understanding. So now, in one room with someone other than my roommate from the dormitory, who I have nothing in common with, I'm finally remembering how it is to have friends. But it all combines within me with my desire, and besides just wanting to be here with Bjorn, feel close to him and talk to our heart's content. I want him. It's a burning feeling, and I hate it. I hate myself for feeling it. But it's still there. I can continue hating myself for it, I can learn to, or I can learn to embrace it. Ready? Uh, I'm resuming the film. Yeah, just getting used to the darkness. I get into the bed next to Bjorn, covering myself with a duvet up to my waist. My thighs pressed up against his, the intense warmth, warmth seeping through my fur. At least I know he doesn't mind. Otherwise, he'd move his leg. Is this enough, having him near me? It might have to be. The film continues and the tempo picks up after the jukebox scene. Does this, silly really look, does this city really look so grimy? It seems like an absolute dystopia. It's certainly densely populated, but that's almost all I know about it. Can't be that bad, though. Who would want to live there otherwise? Huh, you'd be surprised. People live in some really awful places. Like, have you heard of Norilsk and Yakutsk? There are people living there, even though the conditions seem way more extreme than this. Fair point. Why do they live there, though? They must have been born there and just stayed. That's where their families were, all their friends, and the places they knew, the language they spoke. Most people live where they just live out of a habit, or some feeling of belonging stemming from familiarity. That's usually, their other, that's usually either their hometown where they moved to study or where they got their first job. Bjorn picks up his drink and takes a sip before continuing. I already forgot about mine, so now I pick it up too. Ooh, the sweet taste of nut milk. Why do you say it like that? <laughs> nut milk, Jesus. I'm, I'm lucky because I don't remember Poland, so I barely have any emotional attachment to it. I feel good where I live now. It'd be cool to live out there in an exotic country, unlike anything you'd see here, at least for a while. Bjorn shifts and rests his head on my lap, covered with a duvet. I really don't know what to do or how to interpret this. Maybe, but it seems exhilarating, though. Just look at them, trying to find their way through these endless narrow corridors and streets lined with stalls. It looks like an urban hellscape. His head is heavy, definitely heavier than Miko's. It fills most of my lap, but it's not uncomfortable. Quite the contrary. Second L, water time. Alright. Is it pathetic? I know, I guess I am retreading some ground I've already covered before, because I know I've already done the scene of them fucking, and I think this is, bit, like, right before that, so... Y'all, if this is a repeat episode, I'm sorry. I guess I'm just catching up again. It's been a while since I played... Since I played, uh... Bjorn's Path. Is it pathetic that my only remotely sexual experiences so far with my heterosexual friend? Yeah, I think so. Or maybe not. Maybe I'm not a late bloomer or anything of the sorts. Maybe it's just normal. Oh, fuck it. What's normal anyway? Like I ever cared about that. The director surely finds beauty in all this. It's obvious when you look at the shots. I kind of want to pet him, but I know I shouldn't. I don't want him to feel uncomfortable. Asking if I can would be just as uncomfortable, and hearing refusal would ignite me with shame. So instead, I lift my arm and rest my paw on his belly in a more comfortable position, with the least amount of affection possible. He doesn't seem to mind. It is visually stunning, I have to admit that. Seeing that Bjorn is comfortable like that, I relax and just enjoy this moment of closeness. Though the hypnotic music still seeps from the speakers, the film doesn't matter anymore. It was just Bjorn and me. He had to be lonely, too, seeking closeness like that, closeness like that now. I rub a small circle with my paw, to which Bjorn responds with a soft whimper. Really? Come on, Carvin, take the hint. This is fine. You're not doing anything wrong. I finish the drink in one big gulp and put the glass down. I don't feel the taste of alcohol anymore, but it warms up my body almost immediately and the edges of my consciousness blur. Bjorn is a round and fuzzy belly, soft and pleasant under my touch. My paw traces circular patterns across its surface, sometimes punctuated by the bear's approving rumble. Finally, I gather my courage and pet him gently and affectionately with my other paw. Bjorn responds by intensifying the rumbling, and although I can't see well in the screen's glow, I swear he's blushing. Then I notice it. 
I tried not looking that way to honor his privacy, but I saw something shift and pulsate in the periphery of my vision. Huh. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, uh, and uh, check out the Patreon, can Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye!